You're watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. Okay, and thank you for joining with us today with Morale All Things Hair. Today, the Hair Debates segment of What's Up Doc? We are in the home of Dr. Nikki <laughs> Hill of Soka Centers. And I tell you, uh, we are getting ready for a weekend. Oh, my God, I'm so excited, yes. Dr. Nikki. <laughs> oh, my yes. God. So what is going on this weekend? So this weekend is the International Hair Show of Bronner Brothers. So it is all things hair. So, of course, we yes. are there and we will be there. Um, Soga Center, in particular, we're going to be there with the booth, and I'll be giving two classes. So at the booth, we'll be having a scalp exam. So if someone's interested in making sure they have their healthy hair scalp, a check. We'll also be having hair products for dry, dry, um, itchy scalp. We'll also have Botox that will be there. We'll have information on our course. So stop by our booth number 626 mm -hmm. if you're going to be there. Um, pick up some little free little goodies as well. Um, and then for my course, it's going to be targeted and geared towards trichologists, oh, um, wow. cosmetologists, and barbers in regards to what you need to know if you want to take care of patients or clients um, and prevent them from having hair loss disorders and then I'll also be on a panel of hair loss in women why it's happening and what's going on so a lot of things going on this week I'm super excited to be there oh you should so, be yes ma'am what about you oh my mm -hmm. god so we have a few things that are set up we're going to definitely have the book there seven love languages of hair and when I tell you Dr. Nikki we're also too going to be bringing up the awareness of hard water and how it affects the hair. And you know what? But I'm gonna have to sneak away and make sure that I definitely can be there in attendance to your class. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm truly excited about that because when mm -hmm. it comes to trichology, oh my, you stylists, you definitely wanna partake in Dr. Nick's class. So I'm truly excited about that. Mm -hmm. And you know what our topic for today? <laughs> okay, it is one that where we typically are addressing the issues that many women come back, you know, uh, when it comes to the hair, health of the hair, care and scalp. But today in particular, we are capturing um, the audience of the men and some of the things that they battle mm -hmm. and go through, especially during this time of the year, it's the first of the year. And, and you know, fitness and workout mm -hmm. and all of that. It's getting warm out here. The sun is out. And it looks summertime fine. <laughs> yes. And yes. so the men, they go through wanting to bulk up and they want to look good. You know, mm -hmm. they want to look good. And so, but now there are some things that they should be very much aware of. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Nikki Hill is going to touch one of those things in because truly, truly is something that men battle with. And so what is that um, when it comes to what men are taking that they should be very, very careful mm -hmm. in the, with their diet? So diet wise, there's a lot of supplementation that's out there. There's a whole world of supplementation. So you just have to make sure you're getting your protein sources in. That's mm -hmm. what your muscles are requiring to make sure you get that nice bulk that you're trying to obtain. But there are things that you want to make sure you're staying away from, in particular anabolic steroids, things that can actually lead to increased testosterone levels, not outside the natural realm. Yes. Um, and, and actually, we'll have a little blog up that will talk about some of the dietary things that you can incorporate into your regimen that can actually help with bulking naturally and, and giving that resource for your, your muscles to get that, that little TLC that they need. Yeah. But a lot of it's really the supplementation and testosterone, um, which can essentially, un unfortunately, lead to hair loss changes in men. Okay, so now, which I know you men out there are just like, now that should have grabbed your attention. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And at this point, you definitely want to share because mm -hmm. a lot of you know, you know, you have brothers, uncles, cousins, you know, mm -hmm. you know, at this time of the year, they're working out, they want to look great. But again, this should definitely grab your attention because there is um, that element that is attacking the hair. Absolutely. So testosterone, we all need testosterone. It helps with kind of with guys. It helps with kind of developing muscle muscle bulking. It helps with um, secondary body changes like mm -hmm. the beard, hair, and body hair. Love it or hate it. It helps with all of those. <laughs> But uh, one little thing that we all have um, is a little enzyme called 5-alpha reductase type 2. 
Mm -hmm. And it's found in our hair follicles, it's found in adrenal glands, and then it's found in the prostates and testicles. But what happens is that extra testosterone is then converted to a little little chemical called DHT, or mm -hmm. dihydrotestosterone. So this little DHT is what can start to wreak havoc on those men's hair line. Wow, okay, and so, but you know what? And when you say that, it takes me back. I can definitely recall that many of the men that I see that are bulked mm -hmm. up like that don't have hair. I mean, their hair is shaved off because that's how you guys hide it. I mean, you know, we, we do love that. But now, we don't want that to have to be your go-to. Because, again, um, can you explain, like, what it particularly does to the hair follicle? Absolutely. So that's, that's always kind of a, a reality check that I have some give to some of my male patients when they come in. And I already see they have the, you know, the stature. They're, you know, it's a very nice build. But then you tell them, next time you go to the gym, look around. Yes. Those who are kind of your mentors and, you know, your, your body goals, look at their scalp. A yes. lot of them, typically, if they're using methods that are helping them bulk quicker, they're also going to have less hair. Because DHT, you have those little special enzymes right around the hair follicles. So now that testosterone gets funneled in, your DHT enzyme mm. pushes and kind of turns it out into DHT. DHT starts to miniaturize follicles. Okay. So now over time, every growth cycle, the hair follicle becomes smaller and finer, smaller and finer until it turns to these little vellus hairs. And vellus hairs are supposed to be like little baby hairs. Mm -hmm. So when a baby's born, those little down hairs or the little, you look a glimpse off the sun <laughs> at an angle and you see those little yes. down hairs. Beautiful. That's what vellus hairs are. Okay. And they're not too cute on the scalp when you want nice thick hairs right. there. So that's what DHT can do to mm -hmm. the scalp hairs. And, and so it, it comes down to just really making sure that individuals understand, you know, there are just certain things they want to stay away from and they don't want to increase testosterone that can funnel to more DHT if necessary. Okay, so now, um, how can, when, when you talk about the DHT, okay, and when you talk about how it affects the hair, and remember now, mm -hmm. men go through the same cycle of hair growth that women go through okay. you know and so now again it breaks down those follicles and so now to where the hair becomes fine now can the hair grow back from that so there are dht blockers um mm -hmm. there are topicals and there are also um, by mouth treatments now the, the well-known uh DHT blocker that has been FDA approved is something called Propecia or um, Adv Avidart or really the generic name is Finasteride or Tasteride. Now these actually go and block the receptors so that way DHT doesn't bind to those, those receptors in the hair follicles mm -hmm. and it, it prevents them from miniaturizing the hairs. So that's why um, a lot of patients will talk to them about the medications or the topicals and, and what the side effects are because one of the side effects or some of the side effects is it can cause mood changes, it potentially cause decreased libido um, and so we want to be monitor and mindful of that. Also prostate, the initial treatment or initial reason for the medication was for prostate enlargement and wow. so we always want to make sure that you know those individuals don't have a strong family history of prostate cancer. Um, and they let their primary care doctor know they're on this medication so they can always check their prostate as well when they get older. Okay, well, I tell you, um, definitely, again, you wanted to share this information because this, um, we see this all over. I, I know many men, and as you guys kind of walk through and out and about, you'll see other men, and you're going to check their hair, and you're going to say, oh, my God. This is a person that has been affected by that. So now men are affected that way. What about women? Women can also have a little bit of menstruation in the hair. Um, and they usually just call it female pattern or androgenic um, alopecia. It's all hormone based. So it's their estrogen may start to drop down, which actually helps preserve hairs. And then the testosterone and DHT levels start to take effect. And that can happen around perimenopausal time. So there can also, because you also have that dynamic shift in hormones, you can have stress shedding during that time as well. So it can be very detrimental um, in women as well. Okay, so now is that affecting, going back to the males, so does that affect the hormone part? I mean, you know, that men, is it affecting that part of them, adjusting? Is it going up and down? Well, no, they'll continuously make the testosterone. Okay. But it's just that it just naturally will funnel over to um, DHT with the enzymes. So it's just that, that DHT it just binds those receptors really strongly, 
and unfortunately with the hair follicles in their mm -hmm. trine system. But they won't have any other dynamic shifts in their um, hormone levels if they make DHT. Well, I tell you, man, um, definitely, you know, you want to go about doing that the natural way, you know, mm -hmm. and just, you know, um, and see the advice. If, if you see that where you're going through that, see the advice of our professional, which is a dermatologist. And so what can be done, you know, once they now, you know, mm -hmm. see the live, you know, in, in or go back and, and watch, you know, um, the video and see that, okay, I'm being affected by this. So what can actually be done, you know, at this point in time? So you hit it right on the head. The first thing is always make sure you go to a board certified dermatologist so they can really get an accurate diagnosis. There are many different types of hair loss conditions, some of them reversible, some of them can be scar tissue the longer they're there. So mm -hmm. it's always important to make sure you have the accurate diagnosis first. If you do have um, androgenic or oh, male pattern, female pattern hair loss, then there are still a lot of options. Um, starting from natural treatments, there's something called platelet-rich plasma, where we can actually pull your own blood, and it's basically the body healing itself. So mm -hmm. we spin it down, pull out your platelets, your growth factors, and we inject them into the scalp. That way we can actually stimulate some of those hairs to grow a little bit thicker. It's kind of like if you have a bucket at the bottom of the follicle, you're just yes. pouring in extra water to kind of bring up the level so you have mm -hmm. a more robust reservoir to grow thicker hair. Okay. Um, of course, we talked about the DHT blockers, so they can be topical or they could be by mouth treatments. Um, mm -hmm. We just kind of make sure that the individual feels comfortable with being on them and kind of has a full spectrum of what the side effects are. And I always say it's about 2% of individuals can experience that, but nonetheless, we always talk about side effects. Um, also, scalp micropigmentation is a good option for individuals if they're a little bit further gone. It's been like some years, <laughs> 10 years or so that they've been having some yes. hair loss. Sometimes those follicles can get, the hair can become so miniaturized, the follicle just shrinks on itself. Wow. Okay. And so an uh, option, the best option may not be to try to grow the hair, especially if they feel comfortable and confident with a shaved head, which is in. So if they want right. to keep rocking that, there's scalp micropigmentation. And it's basically a medical grade um, form of a tattoo that goes right in the superficial layer of the scalp and it gives okay. the illusion that guys are just wearing a shaped hair, a shaved scalp mm -hmm. or a shaved head optionally. So it makes you look like you have a defined hairline, it frames the face, but it just looks like you just optionally chose to shave your head down. Okay. So there's a lot of different treatments out there. We just, you know, always have to make sure we have the right diagnosis so we can find the adequate pathway of or avenue of treatment. Okay, and so that will give it that the thickness mm -hmm. appearance. Yes. Oh, that is excellent. That is excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, I tell you, Dr. Nikki Hill, thank you so much for your information mm -hmm. because you have truly shed light to a lot of, and I'm pretty sure of all of the men that have these type of questions because they don't typically go to the hair care provider mm -hmm. or to a dermatologist to seek help with this. It's just like, okay, I'm getting older. I've battled with this. It's, it may be in my family, you know, yes. and it could, but possibly not. And so that's the reason why you want to see the advice from a professional. Mm -hmm. And so, Dr. Nikki Hill, where can they find you at? So you can always go to our website, socacenter.com. That's mm -hmm. S-O-C-A-H, center.com. Follow me at Dr. Nikki Hill on social media. And you can always give us a call at our office at 404-474-2301. Yes, and I tell you, thank you so much for partaking with our show mm -hmm. and being part of us today. You can um, get more information regarding our show, okay, thehairdebate.com at Maroon, all things hair dot media, And also, too, we're on Facebook as well as on Instagram, okay? Um, and that's you. If you want to submit information to us in or have questions, mm -hmm. do submit that information to contact at thehairdebate.com. And so, thank you again for being a part of our show. Mm -hmm. And until next time, TheHairDebate.com, where we come to debate, debunk, and discover all things hair.